Russia and Syria are sending Washington a clear message to fully withdraw all U.S. forces from Syria. Here's one America's Pearson Sharp. Both Russia and Syria are calling on the U.S. to immediately withdraw its forces from Syria. In a joint statement, Moscow and Damascus urged Washington to pull its troops out of Syria, allowing their forces to free refugees who are currently trapped at a camp near the border with Jordan. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the U.S. is illegally detaining the residents of the Rukban camp, which is currently suffering a humanitarian crisis. Russian and Syrian forces say they're prepared with buses and supplies to help relocate the refugees, granting them safe passage to begin their new lives. But they can't get started until the U.S. forces leave the area. American troops are illegally occupying Syrian territory in violation of international law, and Damascus claims Washington is actually using the territory to provide cover for terrorist forces. President Trump has vowed to de-escalate the situation and bring U.S. forces home, yet some 400 U.S. troops are still set to remain in the country. At the same time, we can leave a small force along with others in the force, whether it's uh, NATO troops or whoever it might be, so that it doesn't start up again. White House officials say this could allow European allies to maintain their own forces in Syria, with as many as 1,500 European troops staying behind. Half the remaining U.S. forces will be based in northern Syria, in Kurdish territory, and another half at the Al Tanf Air Base in the south. In both places, the U.S. occupied the territory and began deploying military equipment without permission from the Syrian government. Still, President Bashar al-Assad's government has won hard-fought victories across the country, driving out nearly all of the remaining pockets of the Islamic State. Support for the jihadists has dwindled, with the United States withdrawing funding for both the terrorist-linked white helmets as well as anti-government forces in Idlib. That's given Syrian civilians a chance to finally go home, with Turkey reporting some 310,000 refugees have already returned to their homeland, including areas in Afrin and Idlib. But millions more Syrians are still waiting to return home, with over 3 million in Turkey, 2 million in Lebanon, and countless others scattered across Europe. Russia is also urging Syrian refugees to return and is working with Lebanon to help nearly 900,000 transition back to their country. So far, over 110,000 have already made the journey, with tens of thousands more lining up outside the borders every day. It's the same story in neighboring Jordan, where there are now long lines of cars sitting at the border crossings, waiting to return to their homes since the Syrian army defeated rebels holding the other side. Despite the claims of the mainstream media and Western leaders, these refugees are flocking to return to areas held by President Assad's forces. These areas have been liberated from Western-backed Islamic terrorists, and in places like Aleppo, communities are celebrating and flourishing under Assad's control. Still, there's a long road to recovery, but without Western interference or international support for terrorist fighters, war-weary Syrians are finally going home. Pearson Sharp, One America News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.